from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, June the 8th, 2018. Some 10,000 Palestinians took part in violent riots along the Gaza border fence today, burning tires and trying to damage the security fence, including a group of Palestinians who tried to pull down a section of the fence. Dozens of incendiary kites and balloons were also flown over the border fence, several of which sparked fires in Israeli territory. The IDF said rioters also threw grenades and pipe bombs at Israeli troops. The Army said that in accordance with IDF regulations, they were using riot dispersal methods and live fire when absolutely necessary. A number of rioters were injured, and the Gaza Health Ministry said four Palestinian rioters were killed. Yesterday, Israeli jets dropped thousands of leaflets across the Gaza Strip, urging residents to stay away from the fence today and not to take part in the riots, stressing to them that terror group Hamas is using them as human shields. This evening, the IDF reported Palestinian terrorists opened fire at IDF troops from the northern Gaza Strip, striking an Israeli position, but no injuries were reported. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu returned to Israel yesterday after his visits this week to Germany, France and Great Britain. In Jerusalem last night, Netanyahu met with Irish Foreign Minister Simon Kavani and with Latvian Foreign Minister Edgar Zrinkovics. And a report today from Israel's news agency Chadashot that said Netanyahu will not meet with, with European Union Foreign Policy Chief Federica Mogherini this weekend. Mogherini was invited to attend the American Jewish Committee's Global Forum Conference in Jerusalem, which begins on Sunday and had reportedly asked to meet with the prime minister on the sidelines of the gathering. The report said that Netanyahu denied the request and said that Mogherini, who is presently in Jordan, then canceled her Israel trip altogether. A statement from Mogherini's office later today said we had looked into the possibility of expanding the visit to Jerusalem, where she was invited to speak at the American Jewish Committee, adding that for agenda reasons, it turned out that this was not possible. Her office added that it was important to talk about a number of important issues and that Mogherini is looking forward to returning to the region in the near future. There was no comment as of the taping of this news update from the Prime Minister's office on the Hadashot report. The EU and Israel are at odds on a number of issues, including the Iran deal and the move of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Well, the two German rappers who caused outrage with their lyrics, which included references to Auschwitz victims and the Holocaust, visited the death camp yesterday. If you recall, Kollega and Farid Bang won the Echo Music Award, a top honor of Germany's music industry back in April, which led to a number of former winners returning their prizes in protest. Industry organizers then canceled the award altogether. The rappers later apologized and were invited by the International Auschwitz Committee to visit and learn about the death camp. The organization's vice president, Christoph Hubner, who accompanied Kollega and Farid on the trip, told German news media that the visit was a way of making amends. And it is also a gesture, he said, towards their young fans, showing that hatred, contempt for humanity and anti-Semitism have no place in art. Celebrity chef and food adventurer Anthony Bourdain has died. Bourdain, whose mother was Jewish, was in France when he was found unresponsive in his hotel room this morning. The cause of death is being reported as suicide. Bourdain visited Israel in 2013 to film his season premiere of Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, in Jerusalem, your, also filming in the West Bank experience. and Gaza. It's he was 61. The state of Georgia signed an agreement with the government of Israel yesterday to promote joint research. The Memorandum of Understanding was signed by Georgia Economic Development Commissioner Pat Wilson and Israeli Consul General Judith Varnai Shorer. It will result in $2 million in grants for joint research and development projects between companies in Georgia and Israel, with funds coming from the Atlanta-based power utility supplier Southern Company and the Israel Innovation Authority. 101-year-old Jewish-British World War II veteran Mardo Cohen 
was honored by the Queen of England last week for educating youth across Britain about his experiences. Cohen received the Member of the Order of the British Empire last Friday. He told the Jewish Chronicle he was deeply humbled for the honor and recognition of the years he has spent sharing his story. He told the paper, as the years go by, there are less of us around to tell our story. I look forward to continuing to educate as many people as possible in the years ahead, health permitting. And Tel Aviv's annual Gay Pride Parade marked its 20th year today. Tens of thousands marched down the streets of Tel Aviv Friday alongside floats and music. Tel Aviv Mayor Ron Khuldai kicked off the parade vowing to keep up the fight for tolerance and equal rights. Khuldai said we will continue to break through the walls of hatred and reach a time when all people are equal in Israel. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, June the 8th, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom.